All right, good morning. We are live on Facebook, and now we are connecting to YouTube. It looks like we are now, yes, indeed, live on YouTube. Good morning. Happy Thursday. How are you? I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent and voiceover career coach, coming to you live as I do just about every weekday morning, right around, give or take a few minutes, 8 a.m. Eastern time, with the purpose of sharing a thought to help you start the day on the right foot. Uh, as far as voiceover goes, all for the purpose of helping you to become more profitable in your voiceover business. Because that's what voiceover, it's a business. Your your performance is your product, but uh, a business takes way more than just a product to be successful. So uh, I cover all the bases. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking in. And those of you who are watching the live stream this morning on YouTube, make sure you check in. Just say, hey, let me know who you are and where you're listening from this morning. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for Thanks for filing in. So, did you notice my new shirt? Cincinnati, make sure I pull it up here so you see the, the logo, the Cincinnati Reds. So, my youngest grandson is spending the week with us this week. My granddaughter spent the week with us a few weeks ago. So, um, I have two grandsons, the youngest this week. And yesterday was Kings Island Day, which, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it's Maybe I'm nostalgic because I went there as a younger person, but, um, you know, I've been to a lot of theme parks and I mean, Disney's wonderful and I love Disney and you really can't compare anything to Disney, but next to that, I mean, Kings Island for me is it. And, uh, it's got everything you would want, including some amazing roller coasters. So yesterday we, we spent the day at Kings Island today. Guess what we are doing? Yes. We are going to see a double header with the pirates here in Cincinnati. So. Whether we'll last two games or not, uh, whether he'll last two games or not, I don't know. It doesn't matter. This is his first pro baseball game, so we're pretty we're pretty pumped about it, pretty excited. We've got him all, you know, got all the gear for him, his new Reds baseball cap and his shirt, and he brought his ball gloves. So, um, and he wants to, <laughs> his big thing is he wants to make sure we buy one of those batting helmets full of nachos. You got If you're going to go to the ballpark, you got to get a batting helmet full of nachos. So, we'll be doing that. Well, today's question is was actually asked earlier this week, and I wanted a chance to answer it. And so we're going to address that here this morning. And that is this. It's something I think that, that kind of freaks a lot of people out if you've never done it before uh, and can create a lot of anxiety in people. And it is a live directed client, a live client directed session. What, what should you expect when you do a live directed session? or live, rather, client-directed voiceover session. What exactly is that? Well, as the name implies, it is, it's done live in real time, and it's directed by a client. The client could be on the telephone, they could be on Skype, they could be on Zoom, it could be over Source Connect, it could be ISDN, if you're still using that. I mean, it could be done with two tin cans and a string. As long as you can hear them, as long as they can get their message to you and direct you through the session, that is a live client-directed voiceover session. I would say, in my experience, about 10% of everything that I do is client-directed in real time, maybe, le maybe less than that. So the vast majority of what I do is they send me a script, they give me direction, they say, go, Bill, go, and I just go, and I send it back. And if they have some direction, they give it to me, I make the, you know, I make the necessary adjustments, and, and off we go. Uh, but when you're doing a live-directed uh, session, you know— First of all, let me just say this. Don't worry about it. It's, it's going to be okay. If you are, if you've been booked to do a session, that means the client likes you. I tell my students this all the time because I get asked the question. And, and, uh, and, and I know from having conversations with my students that they, you know, they get anxious. And I understand it. I was, I was terrified when I did my first live session uh, because it, it's new. It's different. And as performers, we want to make sure that we measure up. But you have to remember, the first thing is, they hired you because they like you. So you've got nothing to prove, all right? This is, they already like you. It's just a matter of they want, they have a vision, uh, an idea, at least, of what they want, and they want the chance to direct you through it. And so with a live client-directed session, you will almost always receive the script ahead of time. Now, that being said... I've had situations where I did not receive the script ahead of time. And what is very common in my experience is that even when I've received the script ahead of time, 
I've been given an updated version of that while we're actually on the call or in the, in the source uh, connect session or whatever we're doing. We're actually connected and we're ready to roll and the change comes in or changes come on the fly. You may have often sometimes, um, and this is something that's important know, to know, it's oftentimes not just you and a person. It might be you and an engineer uh, plus um, a client plus an ad agency. It may, it may be direction by committee. You may have four, five, six people on. That's not uncommon at all. In my experience, it's rarely been a free-for-all. It's usually very organized. There's a, there's a, uh, a spokesperson for the group uh, or at least a person that, that is responsible for making sure that things get done so they, people understand that, you know, there's somebody who has the, the final say in everything. Uh, although sometimes it's more organized than others, but, it, you know, it, it's, not, it's nothing to worry about. That's really their problem to figure out. Your, your challenge is just to make sure you do what they ask. You both have the same goal going into the session, and that is to give them a great recording, which you will. And they're on your side. That's, this is another thing to keep in mind. The clients on your side, they already like you. They hired you. So they, they're, they're rooting for your success, too. They're not there to judge and to criticize. They're not skeptical. You've already won them over, you know. Um, and I, I'm trying to think if I've ever had an experience that wasn't positive in terms of my interaction. You know, I'm, I remember there was one guy, I think it was, interestingly enough, he, it was a new, the guy was in New York. He was a little grumpy. I mean, not towards me so much, but he was, you know, not as friendly as most people I've, as I've dealt with. And I think that was just his personality. But I've done hundreds and hundreds of these sessions. And I just, I've never had a bad experience. I just, I have never had a bad experience. Uh, maybe bad experiences have happened throughout the history of voiceover directed sessions. And I'm sure they have, you know, it's as with anything in life. But I'm here to tell you that that is the exception. Uh, and it's, it's never been my experience at all. And everybody that I've ever worked with uh, seemed genuinely happy for the opportunity to work with me. And they've been friendly and kind and gracious. And, um, you know, they're there to, 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 to get a great product and they want to help you in any way that they can. So their job is to provide input and feedback and direction. You're the pro. They know that. That's why they hired you. They like you. All you have to do is listen and respond accordingly. And But keep in mind that it's their session. It's really not yours. You know, you're, you're, the, you're the hired talent. It's not your job to direct. So in other words, let them direct. Uh, if I'm reading a script and I don't like what I just did, I don't go back and change it. I keep going until they tell me to change it because that's what, you know, they may love the line that you just did, even though you're not crazy about it. Do you, your job's not to direct yourself. Their job is to direct you. And so you may just have to, you know, bite your lip and go on. Now, if you fumble, you trip over a word, you make a mistake that obviously needs to be fixed. You just calmly take a breath, back up, and you pick up the line. You know, the sentence where you made the mistake or maybe the sentence before so you can read into it. No, it's no big deal. You know, nobody's, per you know, if you have the expectation that you're going to read through this perfectly and they're just going to love your first take, then you'll probably be really upset at the end of the session because that's just not the way it works. Oftentimes, you think of it this way. The client wants to get plenty. They, they know this is their time to get what they need. And they want to make sure they get everything they need to, to make their boss whether it be their employer or the client that they're working for, they want to make sure they give them what they want. So expect that you're going to give them lots of reads, lots of variations. Expect the direction, give me three in a row on this line. That's, that's an extremely common piece of direction, meaning, okay, give me, they want you to read this line, but give them three different takes on it, three different ways like if, if the, it's the tag of a commercial that says sale and Sunday, you might say sale and Sunday, sale and Sunday, sale and Sunday. So it's three different, three different versions, just whatever feels right to you. <clears throat> if they want more, then they'll say, hey, give me three more of that. So give them three more. 
Um, but expect that and expect a lot of it. That's just extremely common because what they will do, they'll go back and Frankenstein the whole thing together later. Uh, they'll take, they like this line, they like this line, they like this paragraph. They'll, they'll go back and they'll put together what they like and what they want. So again, you, you know, enjoy it because we work a very isolated job. And whenever you do a directed session, even though you may feel a little more pressure, which is totally natural, this is your chance to actually have interaction with people. It's a chance to hear what they actually want. How many times have you said to yourself, if not out loud, man, I wish I, wish I knew what they want. I, you know, this is, I'm confused by this, or I'm not sure what direction to go. Well, this is a chance to actually know. And if you think you know, and, and it's not what they want, they'll let you know. Hey, you know, here's, here's what I'm thinking. Slow that down a little bit. Uh, I need it to be a little more authoritative or whatever. And you actually know they will help you dial in the read they want. And there are a few things more satisfying than finishing a session and having a client say, well, you know, really great work. Thank you. You know, this is exactly what we needed. And that's just, and that's going to happen. And it's just a really good feeling because you know, when you end that session that you gave them what they wanted and that they were pleased and that they were satisfied. Um, on the technical end of things, if it's a Source Connect session, that means the client is recording on their end, so you don't need to, uh, unless they ask. And I've had a couple of times where a client will say, you know, I've had a few glitches in my Source Connect today. Can, can you just run a recording as a backup? And in case you just hit record on your DAW and you record it and keep it on your end until you know that all things are clear on the, you know, on the studio end of things. Um, if it is being done over the telephone or Source Connect or it's a Zoom session, by all means, you record it on your end and you'll send the, them the audio afterwards. So there you go. Um, client directed sessions. Yeah, if you haven't done one before or you're earlier on in your career, they may give you great angst and, and anxiety. Understandably so, because the client's actually there. But understand what you'll soon find is that these clients, they're your biggest fan. I mean, they hired you. They're the one, they like you. You know, they're just there to, to guide you through to make sure that, that, you, they, that you give them what they want. And some, I've had, you know, times where I can tell that the client is more afraid than I am because they haven't done this before or they're not accustomed to directing talent. And so, you know, it's in that case, then you can very gently guide them through the process. And what I do is I'll suggest things. If I can tell they don't know what to do, I'll say, uh, what if I just read the first few lines for you and I'll stop at that point and you can tell me if that's what you want. And if not, I can adjust and they'll go, oh yeah, that, that's great. Do that. You know, and then so if, if they're not sure, then you can make you can just gently make suggestions to help guide them through it and make it a good process for them. Because, um, you know, if they enjoy working with you, chances of the, them hiring you and working with you again in the future become much greater. So that's that's my two cents worth on live client directed voiceover sessions. Um, they typically pay better than other sessions. So that's good. The client already likes you and they because they hired you, they selected you. And uh, I, in my experience of doing hundreds and hundreds of these sessions, clients, you know, they tend to be very nice and easy to get along with. And, and uh, the sessions can be a lot of fun. So enjoy the ride. All right, let's check in on the live stream. Got a lot of, lot of folks on this morning. Hey, Don, what's up? Bruce in Louisville. Hey, Ed, how are you? Jay in Massachusetts. Hey, Tom, good morning to you. Tom, I believe in Florida. And we've got uh, Mike in uh, sunny South Florida. Speaking of sunny, yesterday when we went to Kings Island, we had a wicked, nasty thunderstorm. Uh, I mean, the kind where the thunder is big, I mean, the lightning rather, is big and bright. And it's just, it's just torrential rains. And um, that is, as soon as we arrived to the park, that's what happened. We went, out, we went out and got some pizza. And by the time we came back, the rain had stopped and the park filled up and... Life went on, as, as it will do when you're accustomed to having that kind of weather. Hey, David, South Carolina, one of my favorite places in all the world. Hey, what's up, Guy, in St. Peter's, Missouri? Stephen Oshkosh <laughs> says, nice shirt. Steve, you must be a Reds fan. Uh, and uh, Courtney, <coughs> excuse me, Courtney in Little Rock. Sandy and the Burbs of Philly, love it. 
I've been to Philadelphia a few times. It's been a while, but uh, what a beautiful and obviously historic place. An interesting place to, to visit. Uh, good stuff there. Michael in San Diego. Sci-Fi Girl in Denmark. Good morning. Hey, Patricia in Buffalo. Loving these morning chats. I'm a newbie and I'm learning so much on this channel. Oh, Patricia, thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Bruce says, The Beast is a great roller coaster. The Beast is a great roller coaster. My brother-in-law, who went with us yesterday to the park, um, he and I were having a conversation about, for those of you who don't know, the Beast is a more of an old-school wooden coaster. I mean, it is a beast. It is big, and it's tall, and it's fast, and it's scary, and all the things that you want from a roller coaster. But it's one of those wood roller coasters where when it's going up the, the, the initial incline, it goes clink, 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 clink. <laughs> and you, they're, they're the sounds that are associated with it that you don't get with the newer, more streamlined coasters. And there's just something about that. May again, probably nostalgia, but I love the beast. Uh, all right, Indy, Joe says, go Red Sox. Okay, Joe, that's all right. We, it, regardless, you know, of, of who you like, who you root for, you are welcome to join us in the morning. Just if you're playing the Reds that day, just be respectful. That's, <laughs> that's all I ask. Hey, buddy, what's up in Charlotte? We've got Tim. Back in Texas from vacation. I hope you had a great vacation, Tim. Um, Mike says, tell Disney you will do commercials for them for the Disney tickets in Orlando. You know, interesting, true story. Uh, my wife, were we were in Orlando. No, I take that back. We were in Los Angeles. This was, I don't know, six, seven years ago. She was there on business. And so I flew out um, to spend a few days with her. And we went to, uh, we went to Disneyland. Disney World is Orlando. Disney uh, land is what is it Anaheim, but anyhow, Southern California. So um, we went out there and we went in, we said, we went into one of those meetings. We wanted to learn more about their timeshares, which are called uh, Disney vacation club. And uh, it's unlike other, although I've never been through a timeshare presentation aside from this, it's not one of those high pressure sales things there. It's really, it's just more educational. And it was interesting. We thought, hey, maybe this is something we want to get into because, you know, now that we have kids, well, our kids are grown, but we have grandkids and this could be a good kind of family thing to do. We ended up, we just never got around to doing that. But here's where I'm going with this. Not long after that, I was hired. I was contacted by Disney and became the voice of their Disney Vacation Club. Isn't that Interesting. I still haven't decided. We still haven't, you know, bought a timeshare there, but um, I actually became the voice for Disney Vacation Club. You know, it's always a fun thing when you say, you know, you can work for Disney. It was pretty cool because they actually, a couple of them flew up from Orlando and met me in Chicago at a studio there where we spent the day working on this stuff the, for the initial session. After that, we just, we just worked uh, using Source Connect. Matt in Orlando, speaking of which, thank you. Go Giants. Okay, all right. I, I'll respect that. Dory in Maryland, what's up? Jacob, checking in from Tennessee. He's a, a huge Reds fan, he says, unfortunately. Well, of course, the Reds are in the bottom of the basement of the National League Central, so it's it's a hard year to be a Reds fan. But, um, you know, I was telling my, my brother-in-law last night, nothing that Chicago Cubs fans haven't, haven't experienced off and on for many years. Of course, they finally did get a, World Series under their belt a few years back, but not after a long, 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 long wait. Uh, here's a note. Was on one directed session. They spent 10 minutes arguing about three words. I got a huge tip for sitting quietly through it all. You know, that's not unusual uh, where you, know, you get the, once if an agency is involved or, you know, the legal department, all of a sudden now these few words become a big deal. And they ha may have to hash over it. And there are times where I've just sat and waited for them to hash it out. Um, you know, once they figure it out and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. It's all good. Rob says, hey, Rob, how you doing? This is a great segment. I don't do a bunch of live, session live sessions, but I'm always asked to do three takes. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the best ways for a client just to make sure they get what they want. Or another way of saying it, uh, as has been pointed out, give me an ABC. Give me three in a row. Give me ABC. Um, I there's a there's a one of my favorite people I've ever worked with in voiceover. He's an engineer out in Kansas City, and uh, I've done a lot of sessions, including ISDN sessions with him back in the day before we were using Source Connect. 
And he had all these funny, funny little sayings he would use. But one, he would say, give me three on a stick. I've never heard anybody else use that. Maybe they have, but give me three on a stick. I remember the first time he told me that I was thinking, what in the world is he talking about? He must be asking for three in a row. He was, thankfully. Hey, Jeanette, Tampa. All right. Aziza, good morning to you. On a Skype session, I will record my voice and the client so they will remember what they told me. I've had a client thank me for that. Rob, that makes sense. Um, that makes sense, yeah, because it puts it in context. I like that. It says, sounds like great fun. All right, let's see. I posted my demo on my social media and four people have reached out to me already. Fantastic, congrats. Hello from Marion, Illinois. Well, and hello back to you. Somebody's asking if they should go ahead and invest in Source Connect if they haven't booked more than one gig yet. My recommendation is no. Um, frankly, I didn't purchase Source Connect until somebody actually booked a Source Connect session. I just didn't see the need to spend. It's, you know, it's software, so it's not like you have to order hardware to do it. Uh, although I did have to get an iLock uh, USB fob for the key. I don't know if they still require that or not. I still use that on mine, but they, they may be past all that right now. You'll have to go to, you go to source-connect.com to, to find all that out. Um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I just, I just waited until they hired me to do it and then I installed it. Hey, Kevin in Houston. Good morning. What's with all this Red Sox love I'm seeing this morning? Love it. Okay, guys. Hey, well, thanks a lot for being here. I appreciate it. Go Reds. And if you're a, a Pirates fan, I'm, I apologize. Well, sorry, not sorry. But uh, it'll regardless, I'm going to get a, a batting helmet full of nachos as well and have a good day at the park. So you guys have a great day. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.